this will be the ultimate end look of the product that you're looking or watching me uh, present to you. This will be the ultimate end look. We shall see if I can get this transferred to you, showing you how to do it, I mean, and let's see. Let me know how I'm doing. Okay, guys, we're going over this, uh, one of my faux wall stone systems I like doing. It's going to use a quick Crete product, uh, this fast set repair mortar, and also this uh, veneer stone mortar. A couple other products too. Okay, guys. So this is what it this is what it, the finish looks like. Well, it still gets mortar in those joints to make it look like a faux uh, stone wall. Multiple products by Quickcrete. One of them is a repair mortar that I use as a blend with the mortar with the Portland cement and the stone veneer product. This is also quick wall here because I just have blocks stacked on top of each other. And so behind this, we, we saw the white over here. So if I can get my finger in there, over here. It was over here also. And now this is a base going on. So more will go on there as a base. So when I put the final, um, I'm out of material just a second. So when I put the final um, uh, thick, three quarter to half inch to three quarter product on, I then carve it out to look like the stone. Then I um, mortar, it, mortar up the joints. So this may look like it's patchwork, but in reality, well, it's patchwork. No, um, there was a wall down below before the, the part of this wall was here and I went up two more blocks. So I used a quick wall to tie it in from the top, from the uh, two blocks down to the lower part of the wall. Then I use, uh, so that's a fiber product that's going to uh, bind the two of them together and reduce cracking significantly. Um, now I um, put over that, that blend I just told you about and then carve it out like that. On this side of the wall is the quick wall. You'll see what quick wall looks like. So that is what it looks like. And wow, it seems like a crime to, to get rid of that system. The quick wall but this is what it's going to look like when it's done there's a stone column or true stone column to the left and there's the uh, stone for wall that looks like that that gets done like this now the quick wall is white in color I really like this I might I'm so considering leaving you know balanced a little bit like this but, uh, um, the quick wall is white in color. It uses a white Portland, I think, which is great. It helps for efflorescence issues and because um, it's more pure, pure mix design. <sighs> safety gear, safety gear. Um, but ultimately, this is what this would look like when you're, uh, when you're, when you're, that's the base um, before you put the uh, joints in. Again, so what I'm trying to show or talk to you about is you don't have to be so flat with the with this bottom it makes no you get no, no value out of flattening this out uh, because you're going to, your stone is going to also add depth in and out there's no value so you the amateur can just slap this on slap it on and still be okay now make sure you get it on thick enough so I need another quick wall base on there throw out a quick wall so I'm making my own basically with some uh repair mortar and fiberglass to get the base going so repair mortar um, which is a rapid set product rapid setting product and some fiberglass there's the fiberglass there right here sorry about that Let's see if I can get you a better focus than that so there's the fiberglass Owen Corn Owens Corning that's just a bag of it reinforcement it really helps with the cracking if you don't do it you you're more than likely gonna have cracking issues um, well you will have cracking issues if you just stack the block and just try to use regular Portland over the face of it the fiberglass really acts as the bond as the uh, tension resist tension now this is starting to turn chalky white what my white starting to appear here so I'll uh, can start in a moment saturating the wall to reduce any uh, shrinkage cracks that's accelerating drying and cracking, just like your skin drying out when you uh, 
when you're working real hard you, and you don't wear protective gear. The Portland, the, uh, the, uh, the lime and everything else pulls the, uh, dries your skin out, right? So gloves. Gloves is, all, is also part of protective gear. So I'll base that out, finish that base over there, and base these two and call it a day. I think rain's expected tomorrow, which would be good for curing in this case. All right, take care, guys. Bye. Okay, guys. Um, I had to take off my my uh, safety uh, mask. You know, it's just down to wet anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But I just want to know you. I'm not gonna have gloves on or or um, gloves or uh, anything here. I just want to see if I can get this done for you. Okay, good. So let's talk about. Actually, I can put the gloves back on. And that's more so because this stuff will dry your hands out and you'll be hurting later on if you mess around with concrete too long. So I can put the gloves back on for this part. The, um, let me just show you how you can just slap this on at this layer. So here is, hopefully I got the trowel in there. There's just, there's just a trowel, but I can just do that. And I want thick layers and I don't want to don't want to accidentally put a line in anywhere that wouldn't look natural but this is pretty thick it's inconsistently inconsistently thick which I want that because that's a stone right the profile of stone um, now this is pretty wet but I want to just get this going for the video for you guys this is just a piece of band metal that you wrap around put two holes in it you put plastic in it piece of metal and here's your base, your base stone. This is too wet because it's not carving, it's just dropping out. But let me see if I can get in a little closer for you guys. Closer for, closer than that. Yeah, I gotta take off the gloves because I gotta, I gotta be able to jump up and down for the camera for a minute. There we go. Let's try that. Hmm, looks a little different there. So you gotta think stone-wise, what a stone would look like. It's not gonna be too sharp. And is it, the corners aren't really sharp on the corners either. So it's a stone. Now dirt will go on the bottom, so I don't have to, I don't have to uh, do anything there. Now don't stack your joints, so your next one might be sort of like that. Oh, got to make sure I can see myself. Let me do that. Uh, okay. I'm looking into the sun when I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing. Again, you let this set up more because right now it's too plastic. And open these corners, open these up. You know, they're not going to be sharp. Let's see if I can sort of faintly give that a line. When you wrap around, that would be the stone. So you'd wrap that around the stone here. That's coming later. Um, so these would overlap again, so the stone could come down to, uh, this one can come up to here. Sort of like that. I hope I can see it. I hope you guys can see it. I'm probably going to just end the video here because I, I shouldn't be car. It's nothing to be carving yet. Just going to give you an idea. And it's not going to be straight lines, so don't forget to waggle waggle this a bit and cut the corners, cut the corners off. You know, you'd try, you would be trying to make a corner of this and it wouldn't come out that great if you were cutting real stone. So same thing here. And some of the joints are wider. So this joint here is too consistent. So I widen it up there. And maybe on this side I widen it up. So when I put the mortar in there, the white mortar, it would look like a little bit of wider joint than that one. And you get the idea now. Now you're going to stagger your joint. So this would be a stone here. And you can you can lightly out, outline it. There we go. I like that. I like that. And I like how it's actually getting higher, thicker on one side. All right, so that's almost toolable there because I put this on. Um, a base layer kind of kind of dry, adding a little moisture to it. Let's see, here we go. 
And let's get rid of that consistency again. We don't want that consistency. We want some opening, some sharp edges, some dull edges. There we go, like that. All right, so you're getting the, you're getting the point. Now this gets mortar on white mortar, whatever color joint you want to match up. This will probably be more towards the white for me. This mortar joint matching the rest of the mortar joints I've made of this product. That's what it looks like. This product is the, uh, this is only the veneering product with some fiber in it. Put a lot of fiber in it um, to help try to hold it together in tension as it dries up. I'll watch it. I'll put moisture on this thing. I'll make sure it, uh, it gets some, uh, let me see how you guys are looking. I'll make sure it gets some water on it. Yeah, you see it. Cool. Cool. So now you're getting how to do that. I'm going to end the video and, oops, let's do that. Here we go. I'm going to end the video and, and finish working on a section here and then call it a, call it a night because daylight's, I'm losing daylight here. So that, that wall system that you're looking at down there will look like that when it's done, which will look like that. When it's completed and then mortar goes inside there and it looks like the beginning of the video the other side that i showed you the other side of the property the columns will get stone also they'll get this they'll get a something nice put on his columns okay that side of the wall is done it's going to get caps on it but as i look through the camera so this is one of the tricks i do is i take a photograph and look at the work through the camera you can see the top has standing out almost like a teardrop thing going on so that's going to get worked out that's too repetitive that didn't even i didn't even when you were when i was installing i didn't even see that repetitive action but now that i can take a photograph of him look i can go ha ha so I'll, I'll go back there and fix that just now before um i go anywhere though, i want to show you guys schofield is one of the colors i'm using here this is schofield SG860, and I only use about three ounces per bag, uh, per bag of uh, mix to get the consistent colors. Okay, so now you see it's been knocked down. What did I use? I used, these things are great. You should buy a wire brush like that. Oh, focus there, focus. A little wire brush like that. It's steel, it's wire. And just use it to knock it off, knock it back a little bit. Now it blends in beautifully. I could use the metal trowel too to take down any of the texture I created, but textures, you know, you're not gonna hate on texture. You want, you know, to have be as natural as possible. I have existing stone work behind me. It's more blue. Um, and this is as close as I can, I'll do for now. But, here we go. Now I'm gonna have to wet this down in just short order. Right now it still might run so I don't want to rinse it, up, rinse it off, and I want to be careful with that. And now, but I will inspect for cracks and things like that to see how it's drying. And this is a beautiful overcast day, so the drying is pretty even, and I don't observe any cracking going on, so it looks great. Um, okay, there's one little crack right here, right there. So this is still soft and plastic. I can take it out. Rub it rub it back with my finger there and still play it off A lot of these surface cracks like that you can just scratch them off the next day and, and create a new a new look like that If you do run across cracks, here's another one here So that one can still blend it still can blend. There's a harder crack there that that's okay That looks more natural to stone So I'll let it ride. Here's another one there where the where the two what happens when you, when you slap this on is that this is one surface and this is another surface um, when you when you're putting it on and it creates this uh, it can create that so that's more natural I'll leave that alone because it gives light and depth there's no there's no complaint about that cracks I don't like would be a long crack like that you know a shrinkage crack is huge like in here where it wouldn't where it would not show that depth like that so just so you know that's to be expected that's where the two pieces meet you know, sort of like this, where that'd be nice. A crack there would would have been nice, but there's none there. But that's what I'm driving as it. 
you know, it's like where the stone was broken apart. As we look at the real natural stone, like right here, it looks like that. Of course, this needs to be repointed. Um, but I don't want to just spot repoint this because it would stand out. So this is going to get um, the entire wall taken down and repointed. Uh, the entire, you know, cut back. This was already repointed at one time years ago. I can tell by the multiple, by the extra layer here. See that layer, and then back there. So I get to take this off and match the color I want. Of course, you know, if I'm smart, I'll match the mortar color with this, with the wall I'm doing. Um, out here So this mortar won't be uh, It'll be it'll be nice and working there, and and I think I'm probably gonna just go with fiberglass. It just really does great uh, In other words, um, I'm gonna try out a Fiberglass mix of mortar. I won't be so textured so rough there I want to make it easy for me to reproduce and to me that is probably gonna be um, quick walls um, quick wall system with just a, maybe a little bit of colorant in it to turn it to turn it down from bright white because that's a lot of work. So I'll, I'll turn it turn it down from bright white to a uh, grayish color, similar to the uh, so that would be similar to that that color there. So I'll get the right blend until I'm just about there, so I don't mess up the rest of the house's house look. So I'm gonna get pretty. I'm gonna get pretty close. Not in texture, but in color. Okay, that's the one we just did. And I say we. I did, and that's tomorrow. Those two, unless it's raining. The, uh, it's a day later. It is raining out now, so hopefully I won't get my camera too wet. I want to give you the general look of everything. On this side, we have the, uh, just a straight, well, the finished coat is the uh, finished product you're looking at. It is a uh, quick, quick, quick wall. It's just a mailbox temporary leaning there. Quick wall with some caps put on top, decorative caps. Uh, they'll be on top. They're not fully... Installed yet still need concrete to fill in the top blocks The columns will still get um, a stone look to it It's just it's raining. I've got to call it a day. Oh, you can see it without caps now to the left or without caps And you can see what the caps do they really make it pop don't they? Caps really make it pop All right, just giving you an idea more projects to come more projects to come